and I'm in my house, uh, back at my kitchen table. Can you see behind me? I'm sure some of you have spotted straight away. It's your sunflowers, yay! Um, don't they look fantastic? Ah, oh, they're really cheering me up seeing those. Don't worry, I will get them to you at some point, but um, don't they look great? I thought I'd put them there so you could see them today. Welcome to Young Artists Club. Today we are going to be looking at our last Queen of Colours. And um, you'll probably know if you um, looked at the bag that I sent you week before last, or was it just last week? I can't remember. But anyway, you will have noticed uh, that I wrote the name of the artist and her name is Hannah Hoch. Hannah Hoch. So that's our Queen of Colours today. She was a German artist and her work that's most famous was work that she produced in the early part of the 20th century. And she, uh, her work is really kind of funny it's really surreal, it's really interesting and really fun to have a go at making your own kind of art in the same way that she did. So she was a follow, follower of the Dada art movement, that's right, Dada, and it means kind of nonsense, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so um, Dadaism in terms of art is where artists took down the establishment and questioned anything kind of really intellectual or pompous or structural or hierarchical and Hannah Hock uh, was one of the artists who did this in terms of taking her opinions about what was happening in society at the time and uh, putting it into her art in a very kind of silly way. So what she did was she used something called collage or particularly photo montage where she took photographs and pictures from newspapers and magazines, things like that. And she would cut them out and put them together in strange, silly, surreal ways to show a theme or a, a kind of message or an interpretation really of what was going on in society at the time. She was particularly interested in women and how women were portrayed at the time. So that's Hannah Hock's art. I'll show you a few of her pictures now so you can see what I mean. making some paper collage or photo montage art today and here's what you're going to need so you're going to need your nice piece of buff colored card this is going to be the sort of canvas if you like the background for our um, photo montages so make sure you've found that in your pack okay that's that and what else do we need oh we need some scissors I hope you've got some scissors if you don't have scissors you could do some tearing but I'm sure you've all got some scissors so get some scissors in your pack I got you a glue stick so I did try to check all of them that they hadn't run out but you should have enough glue for this project in the pack that I gave you so glue stick a piece of old newspaper uh, to lean on There's that. Today I'm just going to be using this um, sugar paper because I think when I, if I use the newspaper it can look a bit distracting so so you won't see newspaper underneath my work today but if, but do work on a piece of newspaper because otherwise you'll get everything a little bit sticky and gluey. Then, and I hope you've collected these, you need a few newspapers and magazines. So I've got a couple of uh, Bud and Days Get First News and we get national what's it called uh, national geographic kids and what else have i got here oh and i got a copy of es this is a really old copy of the es magazine so anything that you've got just check <laughs> with your grown-ups first so you're not cutting up something that they really need just a few of those and this is great fun to have a little rummage through to get our images so 
I'll give you a few minutes to go and make sure you've got everything you need and I'll see you back here in a second. Right, so um, because our theme this term has been the kings and the queens of colours, um, I thought it would be really nice if we took Hannah Hock's idea of doing collages, uh, but instead of taking our theme to be um, women, for example, like she did a lot of the time, I thought it might be quite nice if we took what was going on in the world not necessarily completely currently, but in the last year or so, depending on how old your newspapers and magazines are. But I thought it'd be quite nice if we took the theme of a colour. So if we were to look through these magazines and newspapers with a colour in mind that we're going to try to collect, it would be really interesting to see if there's any connection between the things that you find in that particular colour. So does that, I hope that makes sense. So we're going to so all you have to do is to choose a colour. It can be your favourite, it can be any colour from the spectrum. You pick a particular colour. It could be a primary colour, it could be a secondary colour, it could be brown, it could be black, or it could be white if you like. I haven't thought of that, but you could definitely use those as well. And then your first job is a really nice job so um, I would suggest putting on some nice music so you can just have a little flick through these magazines thinking about what your colour is and seeing what you can find so say I chose let's do um, green okay I'll do green so um, you just start flicking through and looking for things that are green so immediately I found on this page here you can see we have this I don't know if it's a lizard or a chameleon or something you'll probably tell me um, and then I've also got this sort of patch of green here because it's also useful to collect just patches of that colour as well as actual objects in that colour or things in that colour. So let's, oh wow, next page. It's a bird. It's a, oh I don't know what it's called. You'll be able to tell me. Uh, good, and that's on the, that page. And then, oh, the next page, probably get a lot of these. You can see there's a green tree. And um, if I'd chosen red, then I would definitely cut out a big strip of that red because that having a bit of sort of background colour is really useful for creating your montage. So look out for objects in that colour, but also look out for um, background in that colour as well. Okay, and then once you've once you've decided, I mean, I would put, maybe flick through to start with just to check there's enough. If you if you're like really scraping for things in your in your colour, maybe choose a different colour. Perhaps uh, perhaps a colour will pop out. And think, oh, there's loads of stuff in this this magazine that that's brown. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for brown. Do so you see what I mean? But anyway, but green seems to be great for this magazine. Anyway, and then you start to cut out. So let's go, let's go back to where's this. Um, the bird here. So I'm just going to show you how to cut something out of the magazine. Um, I hope you can see that. I might change the angle so you can see it. But my tip to you is to cut out a cut it out big to start with. The idea is don't don't cut out it really close to it. Just cut out a section that contains it. So I'm just cutting around this bird really big. So cut it away from the magazine to start with, or the newspaper, uh, like so. And then you can start to cut it out. So I'm going to put my glasses on for this because it's close work for me. So you take your, let's just check that you can see. And my tip to you here is to keep your scissors facing the same way and can you see I'm turning the paper rather than the scissors if you keep your scissors facing straight out away from you and then just keep turning the paper if it gets a bit much cut it away so you don't have to have the whole thing flapping down all right and because I'm left-handed I'm going around in a clockwise I'm just going to turn that paper around the bird's head and just tip it so you can see. Like so. Yeah, but if you're right handed, try and go around the shape in an anti clockwise way. And then that just makes it a bit easier. Now there's lots of tail feathers here, so I'm going to have to really turn my. 
paper here, but that's okay. Keep your scissors in the same direction. There we go. So there's my little bird cut out. It looks quite cool. So I'll let you get on with that. Have a look through magazines and newspapers. Um, you can also cut out bits of text if you want to. So you might have noticed in one of Hannah's um, Getting distracted and reading the newspaper now. Uh, you might have noticed that she uses text sometimes. So if your text is in the right colour, let's have a little look for some green. Here we go. This is quite an interesting bit in green. It says, hope as endangered species recover, which is nice. So I would maybe cut that, that text out as well. I might slice it up again, but um, that's just quite a nice green powerful message so so yeah I would definitely cut that one out so um so have a go I'm gonna cut some stuff out I'm not going to do it in green I'm gonna do it in a different color and you'll see what I do in a second So you can see here, I've been very busy cutting out lots of pictures, lots of text from newspapers and magazines, all with the theme color blue. And then you take your base piece of paper, which is that nice buff color card, and start arranging your cutouts just as you like. So my top tip would be to put the largest pieces on your base paper first. Stick those down and then you can have fun layering up the smaller pictures and the smaller pieces of text just as you like but yes get that base of big pieces big things big background colors to start with and that will give you a good background for the rest of your objects So I'm just going to show you my finished piece. I shall probably show you a close-up photograph of it as well, but I think it looks pretty cool. So this is obviously a picture in blue. All sort of quite, I don't know, is it sort of slightly medical? Is it kind of clean and fresh? Um, there's certainly something there. But I don't know what really yet. I need to think about it a bit more. You might find a really strong theme with yours, but you might not. But that's all part of Dadaism. So do have a go. Let me know how you get on. It would be really great if you could uh, send me a picture on our group email when you've done it, and I will share it with the young artists. And yeah, you can chat to me on our group email. I shall be next to my iPad during the class time so between four o'clock and 5 30 and if you've got a question or you just want to have a chat or you've got a message for another young artist let me know and i'll pass it on so um good luck i'm gonna i'm so excited to see what you come up with and what colors you choose i wonder if everyone will choose blue or maybe nobody will choose blue now because I chose blue. I don't know. I'm interested to see. And um, thank you so much. And I'll put some more um, I activities up after the Easter break. But in the meantime, keep safe, keep well, and keep creating. <laughs>